Okay, welcome to the video for the final part of Flora's Fauna, which is going to be our nice simple envelope border which is going to cover up all these ends. Now what we do need to do, some people do prefer to tidy up the ends after they've made the border, um, but I actually prefer to do it beforehand because I find these just get in the way and get tangled up if, if I don't. So I'm just going to show you it's, just some more to do. I mean, when you're dealing with acrylic yarn that's got a nice sort of secure sort of knot at the at each end, you probably don't need to worry too much about um, making them extra secure. But I do. I'm a great believer in better safe than sorry. So what I usually tend to do is just make completely certain that there's no chance of these coming undone before, and just go around tying them together in pairs. Right, so. And then just sort of pull it tight there. So sort of go around like so, tying them together. And then once you've done that, just need to make them a bit shorter. So don't cut them too short because if you cut them way too close to that knot, then there is a chance it'll come undone. So I usually leave them. Oops, roughly sort of two centimetres, just under an inch, something like that. Okay, so just go if you haven't done it before, uh, done it already, just go around the edge of your blanket like so, making sure all your ends are nice and tidy and secure, and then we will start on making the actual border. Okay, so I'm now ready to get started on the border. So, first thing to mention is the hook. Now, Although my pattern is written for four millimeter hook, which is that is the kind of average size hook that you would need to use to get to the tension or the gauge that I suggested, you may have noticed though through the other videos that I've actually been using the three point seven five millimeter um, because I've noticed that recently. I think as the more and more mosaic crochet I do, my my stitches have got a teensy bit looser, probably because I'm a little bit more relaxed doing it now. So, um, so what I've now done is I've now dropped down half a hook size, so from 3.75, that's taken me down to 3.25 mil. Um, it, it's going to be personal taste for you, really, which size you use. I Most people will need to use a smaller hook to keep the border nice and flat um, and avoid little sort of bumps in it. And usually sort of half a hook size is about right. But, um, yeah, I'll leave you to judge that. So I've got my smaller hook. Um, I've also got, if you notice, a little pile of markers here because we're going to be, just to help us make, I mean it's a lovely easy border but it's made extra easy by marking key stitches so we don't have to start sort of rooting around trying to work out where we are. So I've got a marker for each corner and then I've got one which we're going to be um, marking the slip stitch at the end of each round. Um, because we're going to be working into that so we've got one for that and then there's another one when we come to do the pattern just so we can again find it easier to see where to put that but I'll explain all of those as we go around so you're going to need some markers and a smaller hook than you had for the body of your blanket okay so there's actually two um, options for the border here depending on whether you want it to sort of match up with the spacer panels that I recommended for the small blanket or for the large blanket they're both interchangeable, just like the space panels. Both patterns are totally interchangeable and will work equally well around whatever size project you're doing. But to keep things sort of more um, easy to follow in the pattern, I, I've got I've sort of specified whether it's for the like the small blanket or the large blanket. Okay, um, uh, and if you haven't done an envelope border before, um, you may not know. Um, but basically, it's two borders. I'm going to be working two borders around, which does seem a little bit labour intensive I know but that will just enable us to then hide all these little ends between the two borders and when you um, join the two borders together you get this amazing thing happen where you don't get any little curls you know sometimes if you're doing a single border the corners will just curl up well that just won't happen with your envelope border it'll be lovely and flat right so I've got my little pile of markers that will help us with the border and I say just show you I'm now at the top edge of my blanket so this is the very last row that I worked on the main body of my blanket so we're going to be starting if you can see there in this chain the last chain on that last row 
so we're not going to be working into the chain space you could if you wanted to work around those chains like so to make it like a front post stitch but if you do that just be aware that when you do the the builder on the other side you will then see little dotted lines or like a line down the edge there where if you look and you do that so you'll have the the yarn from the other border on there and also and and if you do that you'll then probably want to do post stitches around there i don't do that to keep it lighter because i've got another method as you might you may may be aware where i did do front post stitches but that does make it um a little bit more bulky so by working into the chains so at the top we're gonna work our first stitch like that but all the way along the edge we are going to basically be working a double crochet into that chain there like so okay so that's all we're going to do all the way out it's really quick and easy to get started there okay so we'll get started with a standing double crochet into as I said this last just that front loop of this last chain on the final row of our blanket okay if you notice I didn't actually put and I'll start again didn't actually put a knot in the end of that first like normally with a standing double crochet when we've been doing the blanket I've put I've settled with a, a slip knot on the end but this I've just basically if you see just twisted the yarn around that will just mean that you don't then end up with a, a bulky knot in your border if you prefer to start with a slip knot that's fine anyway it's going to start like i said just in that front loop of that very last chain on the last row of our blanket and we're gonna pop a double crochet in there okay so now we've got one chain just one and then another double crochet in that same stitch don't worry about it all sort of pulling up there that will all get sorted out at the end okay so now what we need to do this is where the markers come in so we've got double crochet chain double crochet but you can see it's very difficult to sort of spot which is the chain so to help us with that i'm going to do this on every corner we are going to pop a marker just in that last chain okay so whether you put it in the front loop or the back loop doesn't really matter there i'm just going to pop it into that front loop of that chain okay so we now know where our corner is going to be because so we're going to be working into that chain we don't work into chain space we're going to be working into this actual chain when we do the corner on the next round and that will you won't really notice there won't be any kind of hole then like you know normally on the corners when you work into chain space you get a little hole but you won't there that'll fill that in okay so that is now our first corner done so now all we're going to do as i said i've just turned that around we are now going to be working so insert your hook like so into this front loop of that chain and work your double crochet there oh hold on i got didn't quite get all of the that's no good is it on that stitch that split a bit right there we go so i'm going to work to that front loop there double crochet so that's all we're going to do okay. work down the edge like so just picking up that front loop of those chains okay and that is how easy it is to get started on your envelope border if you remember to have that little chain space at each end okay so carry on like so until you get down to the end of this side and i'll meet you there okay so i've now just got a couple more um stitches to pick up down this edge and then I'll get to that sort of 
first, well, second corner. <laughs> we start this row, this uh, um, edge with a corner, right? So we'll just do the last couple in there. So as I've been doing all along, carry on like so, just in that front loop, right down to the very, so this is now actually, because I started at the top of my blanket, this is now that foundation chain here. Okay, so just carry on. And this time we're going to be working just front loop double crochets just into these stitches here. So we're going to start with our corner in this first chain here. Okay, so one double crochet, one chain, one double crochet all into there. And then remember, we're going to just pop our marker into that chain. Get in there we go so we now know where where our corner is and as I said we're just now going to simply insert our hook into that front loop of every chain along the bottom there okay so it's important to just do the front loop because when we come to do that back border we're going to be using the other loop for that okay so just carry on like so and i will see you again at the next corner okay so i've now just got to the next chain there at the bottom bottom edge of the blanket so here we can do this corner exactly the same way as we've done the last two so it's just a case of working into the front loop of this chain we're going to do one double crochet one chain one double crochet okay and then we're going to pop our marker into that chain brilliant and then it's a case of turning around and we're going to go back up this edge. So again, it's just a case of picking up, maybe you can see this front loop of the chain. I think a little bit different at this end, but it is still, if you're worried about where to start, just pull it out so you can see the actual spaces and then just get this front loop there. Okay. And we're going to work as before into there you can always tuck your finger there to just put them out of the way if you want okay Move that marker out of the way so it's just double crochet into the front loop of all of those chains up this edge okay so carry on like so and i will see you when you get to the next corner Right, on the, the home straight for this first round of the front border here. So I've just now got up to the last corner we're going to need to work here. So again, it's just to make sure, difficult to show you, but there's definitely the chain space there. So we're now going to be working. Our corner will be one double crochet, one chain, one double crochet into the front loop of that last chain or the first chain on the top edge and as we've been doing all along we're going to pop that marker into that chain and now just as we did at the, the on along the bottom edge of the blanket along the top we're going to just now work a whole row of double crochets just into that front loop right along the bottom edge okay so carry on and do that and I will see you when you get to the end of this row which is also right where you started this round right so I've now just done that last stitch along that top edge of my um, blanket for the border there now so now we just need to join it up to where we started so it's going to be a nice simple just a slip stitch so we're going to insert our hook into that first standing double crochet we did there 
pull through now make sure you don't pull this loop too tight because we're actually going to be working the last stitch of round two into that slip stitch so so we don't forget where that is so we don't lose that slip stitch just going to pop another marker in there okay we only get quite a few markers in the corners but don't worry okay and now to start the next round this is where it's handy that we've marked this corner chain because we're going to do one chain this this chain doesn't count as a stitch it's just basically a turning chain to get us up to the right level and then what we're going to do in this mark stitch just into that back loop of it so I've, I've actually put my marker into the front loop and that means that I can get hold of that back loop and we're going to do our corner into there so that will be one double crochet one chain one double crochet so just like we were doing on the other corners, now what I'm going to do, take this marker out of here, I'm just going to pop that into that chain again. So it's a case of always making sure you stick a marker in that corner chain so it's easy to find again. Okay. So we've got a different coloured marker here which marks where the last stitch of the next round, well this round I've now started on is going to go, and then this one. Is for the corner chain so we're going to do that every corner will be done the same okay so now all you're going to do along the edges is work back loop double crochets okay so into that back loop nice and easy just going to do there we go like so So you may notice that I haven't actually mentioned stitch counts at all on here and that's because for this border that when we get to the little pattern bit it's only a two stitch repeat so ideally you will have an odd number of stitches along each edge of your blanket now for Flora's Fauna you'll probably find that on the top and bottom edges you have got an odd number but when you're doing the left and right edges you'll probably have an even number of stitches. But don't worry about that, we don't need to adjust it here, we can easily adjust it when we actually come to row, I think six, <laughs> off the top of my head, but when we get to that first row where we, we do our front loop trebles, we can adjust it there. So don't worry about that, it's just a case of working around back loop double crochets, and when you get to those marked corner stitches, just do into the back loop of that again just do one double crochet one chain one double crochet and remember to move your marker up all right i've now just got to the end of round two of the border so you can see i've now just got up to that marked stitch so that's where i i marked the slip stitch at the end of the previous round so we've got to make sure we just work on another back loop double crochet into that marked stitch. Whoops, pick it up like so. I'm going to take that out. And then we've just got on now. So this, so that was the marked stitch. This is that chain that we did, that sort of turning chain. So we ignore that and we're going to slip stitch into that next one. So that's right next to our marked corner chain. So we slip stitch into there like so and again pop that marker in there so we know that that's where we're gonna oh if i can do it up work our last stitch on this next round so to start the next round we've got our turning chain again and then remember we've now got a marked corner stitch so we start there in that back loop of that and get my hook in <sighs> can't crochet at the moment there we go so we've got one double crochet one chain one double crochet i'm going to take that marker out and move it up there okay so then it's just a case of basically repeating well that's the start of 
exactly what we did there on round two just repeat that all the way around again so that's back loop double crochets all the way around apart from in the corner where we're going to be working one double crochet one chain one double crochet into that back loop of that corner chain so I'm now going to do two more rounds so I will have four in total and then I'll come back and we'll we'll be bringing in another color this is obviously if you want a wider border you can now add some extra rounds if you want a narrower border you might actually want to leave it where you are here entirely up to you but when you're ready to do the next bit of the pattern come back to me and we'll take it from there right so I've now got to the end of round four um, and you'll probably notice I've now got some extra markers here because we are now going to be um, marking sort of we're going to be marking twice in each corner I'll explain what I mean in a second right so to finish off round four I've got the marker there that I put in that slip stitch at the end of round three so I'm just going to make my last back loop double crochet in there and then as always just as normal slip stitch in there and now I'm going to mark this again it is going to get nice rather crowded with marks in the corner so it's quite useful actually if they are all different colors okay so that's that done so now what we need to do we need to pick up our next color or CC3 and what we're going to do is just simply pull that loop through there pull that down okay so I'm now going to do and I just make the stitches in the corner is just work over this end just to hold it in place but we will still need to weave it in at the end so we've now starting again as we always do at the start of our um, new round with a turning chain now if you have been marking your corner chains in just into that front loop like I have you can leave that marker where it is if you've been putting your marker under both loops or into the back one just take it out now and move it forward to that front loop okay because then what we're going to be doing is working into that loop so that's exactly the same as we have been there so pick up that back loop just going to like I said just working over that tail just to hold it in position so we've got one double crochet one chain one double crochet but we're leaving that marker there I'm just going to pull that down there so it's all nice and neat so I'm now going to pick up my new marker and pop that into that front loop of that corner chain okay and then we're just going to carry on exactly as we have been for the last couple of rounds um, so it's all back loop double crochets but in the corner we're doing one double crochet one chain one double crochet but just remember to leave up marker in that front loop of your round four chain as well as the new one in your round five chain okay Ooh. pick up the right yarn I'll go over that once more so that's nice and secure we'll weave it in later so there we go just back loop double crochet all the way around and I'll see you when you get to the end again all right so I'm now almost to the end of round five just got the last couple of stitches to do so there we go here is our marked slip stitch at the end so we know we've got to work our final back loop double crochet over the round into there okay like so and then as usual we're still going to be working we're just joining up to the, that first double crochet there with a slip stitch and then pop that back into there again right so now we get to the next markers so there is the marked round four um corner chain and this is the one we just did on round five so what we now need to do if you are doing the small blanket version of the um of the border you can now cut your 
C3 colour. If you're doing the large blanket, just sort of leave it at the back ready because we're going to need it again um, in a couple of rounds, rounds time. Okay, so we've now joined at the end of row five and to start round round five to start round six we're going to do just what we did before we're going to basically like i said either drop that and leave it at the back if you're going to be doing the larger border or you can cut it off if you're doing the small border now we whichever one we're doing we're going to need to pick up our c5 just by pulling that loop through there again and you can pull that in and to close that up then we've got a turning chain as we usually do okay so now we've got remember i actually marked my corner chains just in that front loop of the chain so we can leave that there and now work into the back loop if you've got your marker in a different loop just make sure you've moved it through to the front one we're going to now go to that back loop of that chain and work our corner as usual which is one double crochet one chain one double crochet okay so then we're going to pop our marker into there again okay so we've marked that corner chain again right now we've got quite a lot of markers in here <laughs> so if you are doing the small blanket um, you won't now need to keep this chain marked you can actually take that out of there because this is now going to be the final round of our border if you're doing the larger one we are going to need to work into this chain again so leave that marker there okay so whichever you're doing pull that marker out to one side or take it out if you don't need it because you're doing the small one so now the next stitch we do we're not going to carry straight on here we're now going to be doing a, a pattern sort of similar to what we've done with our spaces and we're going to start with a front loop treble in this marked stitch from round four okay so pop that in there bit tricky with the marker in okay so then we start that and right when we get right to the end of the round we're going to be working into that right at the end as well I'll leave the marker there now because of that so now all we're going to do all the way along this edge so is make sure you start in the right place okay so we've got this is the stitch that we've just worked in front of so now we're going to start with a back loop double crochet in there and then it's just a case of alternating one front loop, front loop treble one back loop double crochet so that's what we're going to do all the way along so actually I've got the little repeat being one back loop double crochet one front loop treble okay so keep repeating your back loop double crochet and then one front loop treble all the way along now depending on the number of stitches you've got along each edge your final front loop treble will either be into the marked round four corner chain at the other end of the row or it'll fall just before that um, so I'll meet you at the next corner I'll explain what we do um, there that's how we're going to adjust the stitch counts so if it falls just before we're going to just need to miss a stitch basically so. okay so I've now got to the end of this first edge of round six here and as you can see my final front loop treble is actually going to fall just before that corner chain because we had an even number of rows down this side of the, down the sides of the blanket so i do expect when you're doing the border on the sides that you're going to end up like that that's fine all we now need to do now if you're doing the small blanket to be honest you can probably just work your double crochet there then do your corner as normal and have an extra stitch there not a problem if you are doing the large blanket though to make each of the corners look exactly the same what we're going to need to do is miss this last stitch there because we need to end the rows with a front loop treble and then work straight into 
that corner chain so although I'm actually doing the small blanket here I'm actually going to just show you how to do that anyway so say I'm now if we if your last treble had ended in there then your next stitch to work would be the chain so we're just going to continue as if that was the case okay so again into the back loop of this marked chain I'm going to work one double crochet one chain one double crochet so I've just skipped that stitch so we'll mark our corner corner chain as we always do and what we've got to remember as well because we're now going to be doing and shortly going to be doing the border on the wrong side of the blanket and we want to make sure we end up with exactly the same number of stitches uh, along each edge on for both for both borders so what we're going to do because we've now missed a stitch there take my hook out good idea is to pick another marker so you do need a good old collection of markers for this and just mark down here so if you can see there we are that was the chain where we worked all our stitches in the corner on that very first row so I'm just going to stick a marker in there and that will be a little reminder when we come to do the back border that we're going to have one stitch less in that corner that will then make it right by the end so for most of the blanket we'll actually have one stitch less but that won't be a problem at all that's just to remind us to do that okay so now and as I said because I'm actually doing the small blanket I'm actually going to remove this marker here now because I don't need it if you're doing the large blanket border leave this marker in here marking that front loop of that corner chain from round five because you're going to be working your next round the corn in there in the corner okay but I'm not so I'm going to get that out of the way because there's enough markers in this corner right so now what we do we're going to be working into this marked stitch into this marked corner chain next and so if you had the like I said if you'd had an odd number of stitches down this side too then both of them both of these trebles that one and the one we're now going to work here would all both be worked into there but we've just got a, a, a stitch earlier it really doesn't show in the end okay so start that round on this side edge with the front loop treble in there and then and then we can remove that because we've now done that corner okay that gives us a little bit more space all right so if you were doing the large blanket you would have your marker still in that stitch so now it's just carrying on as we did before so you've got one back loop double crochet one front loop treble until you get to the end and what you should find when you're doing the um, top and bottom edges is that your last treble will actually fall into that marked corner chain because we had an odd number of stitches at the top and bottom right so i've just now got to the next corner and as you can hopefully see i'm about to do my final treble and that as i hoped and expected is going to fall right into that marked chain there so we end that there so there's just no extra no extra stitch to miss on that round so we don't need to worry about marking the other side we can just go straight away and work our corner into our marked round five chain there two three stitches so double crochet chain double crochet and pop our marker into there and as before if you, if you were doing the large blanket leave this marker in marking that front loop of that corner chain but I'm doing the small one so I don't need it I'm going to take that out to get it out of the way so now we go around the corner we're going to work straight into this marked chain again and now we can carry on along the edge like so so what I'll do I'll just take that marker out of there and I can just show you the difference so this is what your corners look like if you had an odd number of stitches along the edge of your blanket where you will be working both of the trebles in the corner on each side in, into that corner chain 
so that's like that and if we go to the other end where we started this where we because along this other edge we had an even number you can see it's slightly different but it's really difficult to really tell the difference because we just worked our last treble of this side into the loop before but that is basically you can see there the corners and once you now do, if you're doing the large blank especially, once you've then worked your little sort of corner square, you really won't be able to tell the difference. You'll have to look very closely. Okay, so just carry on all the way around, completing round six of your blanket, and I will see you when we get back to the beginning again. Right, so I've now got to the end of round six <laughs> with my little little cluster of markers there so if you remember this dark blue marker marks the slip stitch at the end of the previous round each time which is where the last stitch goes now for this so I've now got to it you can see I've just done my last back loop double crochet and that comes to the um, stitch before that which is brilliant because this is effectively we won't actually be working into that slip stitch this time because remember we've got to finish our corner so I'm going to take that out to get that one out of the way okay so if you remember when we started this round I said we were going to be ending up in that same corner chain that we started in yeah so I left the marker in there so we can see that so that's it the final stitch it's going to be in front of that worked into that chain okay like so so for me as I'm doing the small blanket small blanket build up that is it that's now finished I can just um, sort of fasten off before I do that I'll just show you what you would do if you were doing the large blanket so if you're doing the large blanket what you would do is as we've been on all the other rows you would join with a slip stitch mark that slip stitch and then as we did before you're going to pick up your other colour so you'd leave your C3 colour C3? C5 at the back, C5 at the back and pick up your C3 pull that loop through and then it would be a case of your turning chain and then just like we did on the last one you've got your in this marked corner chain it would be I'm going to pull this out again but I'm showing you how you'd get started there case of you got it one double crochet one chain one double crochet and then you're going to work i'm going to leave that marker in there because we'll need that for what we're doing on this so but what you would do with the large one you'd actually take that marker out of there now would you yes you would and <laughs> put it into your chain there so you've got your corner as usual and then it's a case of working there we go your treble in there so if you can see and then you're going all the way around working a double crochet which will be into the trebles and then a front loop treble two rows down so that if you were doing the large size this is how you'd now continue okay so very similar to what we've done on row six but you're basically filling in the trebles like so all right so that is what you would be doing if you were doing a larger border i'm not going to do that for my blanket so i'm now just going to pull this back that i've just done and see three Ooh, probably have to take that out so i'm going to go back to where we were right okay so I'm now back at, I've just done, get here, 
I've just done that last treble there so I'm going to remove this marker because it's in the way so I've now just done that treble into the same corner chain where we did our first treble at the beginning of the round again get rid of that leave this marker in because we need to know where the corner chains are so we we can get the front border and the back border all lined up properly so leave that one in but now we're just going to do an invisible join okay so it looks much neater and it's much easier to to keep a track of your stitches so to do an invisible join if you're not aware how to do it we're going to pull that out like drop off i don't know about 15 cent leave about 15 centimeters six inches something like that and then what we do we don't pull normally to fasten off you would pull that through we don't do that we're actually going to pull that like so so we have got if you can see just the one strand of yarn now coming out of the middle of our final stitch and then what we do we thread that end onto a tapestry needle and what we're going to do, we're actually now going to be replacing the top loops from our first um, from our first double crochet there. So what you do, don't actually insert your hook into that stitch you started with. You, you go for the next one, which is actually our chain. So where we've got that marker, if you, put, if you go in there, you see you'll create an extra stitch. If we go here like so, so underneath both of those loops make sure you don't pull this too tight can you see what we're doing? we're now going to actually create an extra loop that looks just like all of the others okay, so don't say, don't pull it too tight now we're going to take the hook and insert that into the middle of there where our yarn came out of the stitch and I always like to go just down through so there's that extra little loop at the back there just sort of extra security okay so pull that down like so and say so just pull it tight enough so it looks exactly like all of the other stitches and that is why it's an invisible join okay and then all you need to do is to go on to the back Again, make sure you don't pull it too tight because we need to leave that looking nice and neat and tidy so we're just going to weave in these ends okay so go along like so I like to go around there like that and then if we come back again the other way we're nice and secure okay that's not going to go anywhere again don't pull it too tight we don't want to ruch anything up okay turn that off that's all the actual you don't have to be too neat with these ends because that's obviously all don't need to be too neat with those I hope you saw what I just did there and I didn't drift off the edge of the screen um so yeah do the same with these ends as well weave them all in so they're nice and secure um and the one you started with and then I'll be back in a moment to show you the border two the which we're going to be working on the wrong side there okay okay so i'm now ready to start border two and that is basically going to be much the same as border one apart from the fact we're just gonna we're not going to bother about our little pattern at the end i'm just going to make it all all plain rounds of back loop double crochets so if you remember on the corners where we had to um, skip a stitch at the end uh, before the corner just to make that little pattern right I told you to put a marker in the other side so um, for those corners I'm going to start with one of those just to make it easy to sort of explain to you um, what we do with those corners but you can start in any corner you wish and that will be in that end chain that we've got on there so i'm starting there um, um so we're going to need some more stitch markers to mark our so i've got four yellow ones which are going to be marking like we did on the front here marking our corner chain 
and I've got an extra one it's that dark blue one again which is going to mark the slip stitch at the end so apart from that it's exactly the same as before so to get started say so I'm starting with one that I marked so I know that I've got to skip one of the stitches in the corner so we end up with the same number of stitches on both borders so start again with the standing double crochet into that marked chain there okay so that is my double crochet I'm going to take that marker out because we don't need it anymore that was just to tell us we're missing one of the stitches so on a on a normal corner if I hadn't marked it what I would now do is one chain and then another double crochet into that same chain but because I marked it I'm just going to do the chain and then we're going to start straight away working down the edge so that chain is going to need to have whoops, a little marker put in. I'll do it in a minute when I've done the next stitch it's going to need a marker put in it so it can be slightly trickier some people find it a little harder to see the chains on the back because we've already got the stitches worked on the other side but if you just I don't know if you can see that give it a little stretch hopefully that just helps you see where the chain is okay so it's just going to be a case of setting our hook into that chain there we go and then it's exactly the same as we did on the other side I'm just going to work away right down working into those chains right until we get to the next corner if it's marked we do like I did at the start here so that will be one double crochet one chain and then turn and come down the other side if it's not marked make sure you just do one double crochet one chain one double crochet in every corner but apart from that as I said it's exactly the same okay so just carry on and do that I will just see you when we get down to the next corner right so I've now got down to the next corner and as there's no marker in that we know we can just do the corner as it's written in the pattern um, sort of nice and balanced so it's a case of now so we find this last chain okay so you can see where we worked into the back there hopefully and see where all the chains are on the other side so we're just now gonna you can actually pick up both of the front loops there if you want let's finish that off so it's going to be one double crochet one chain one double ooh, one double crochet and remember to just pop that marker into that chain so we know how to find it next time and then it's just a case of along this edge we're just gonna there's only the one loop left that we can work into so it's just going to be a case of working double crochets into this oh I picked up a little bit of the loop hold on so just working double crochets into I keep picking up a little loose bit of yarn Let's try again so double crochet into each of those okay along there so you'll do the same when you get to the top edge of the blanket as well okay so carry on like that all the way around and as I said if you come to a corner where you put a marker in it remember you're just doing one double crochet one chain into that corner that marked corner chain if there's no marker then it's one double crochet one chain one double crochet all right so carry on around and i'll see you when we get to the end of the row just so i can remind you what we do when we finish each round and start the next one okay so I've now got to the final stitch of round one of border two so I'm just going to work that into that last front loop there and then we're basically going to be doing just what we did on for the first few rounds of border one so at the end of the round slip stitch into in this case it's the standing double crochet but it will be 
um, into that well the first double crochet that you do on the round so slip stitch into there remember don't pull that too tight stick a marker in that la in that slip stitch you've just made and then what you remember to do is when you get to the end of the row the last stitch of the round will be worked into that mark stitch so just the same as we did on border one so now to get started again with the next round it's just a turning chain that doesn't count as a stitch and then we've got our marked corner chain so we're just going to work into the back of into the back of that actual chain there we go with one double crochet one chain one double crochet and it doesn't matter what you did on border one now we don't need to worry about um, doing anything different in any of the corners because we've already adjusted that stitch in that first round so it's just every corner will be like so so just going to remove that marker from that round and move it up so I mean if you want you can do exactly the same as we did on border one and do your little pattern as well but I am just going to basically do six rounds of plain back loop double crochets because we've got a total of six rounds there so however many rounds that you did in total on border one you repeat on border two and the only thing you do at the end is rather than joining with a slip stitch we did an invisible join didn't we so you carry on round do all of your however many rounds you need to and when you get right right to the end the last couple of stitches of your final round of your border if you're not quite sure how we finish it off come back then I'll just show you the invisible join again then but in the meantime it is just a case of back loop double crochet in every stitch and in the corner chains remembering to do one double crochet one chain one double crochet into the actual chain not the chain space and then mark that chain so we can find it again easily next time and that is that right so I've now got to the end of the final round of my um, border two so we've just got as you can probably see there now just got to do that last stitch into this marked slip stitch so get rid of that don't need that one anymore because we're not going to be worrying about any more slip stitches and working into them so there's my last stitch into that one that was marked now on the previous rounds we've been working a slip stitch into there haven't we to join but to make it nice and neat as we did on border one what I'm going to do is an invisible join okay so cut that off so then we pull that out so we've just got the one strand of yarn coming out of that last stitch thread that onto our tapestry needle and as I said before we don't work into this first stitch there where we would have slip stitched we're going to be replacing this loop so make sure you actually insert your needle there okay if you do it under the previous stitch you'll create an extra stitch for yourself okay don't pull it too tight then we're going to insert that back into that loop it came out of and I say also pick up that back one there we go and just pull it so it just looks like all of the other loops there we go and that's why it's an invisible join so then as before and just weave weave that in on the back okay back again this way and to be completely certain we'll go back again way okay chop that end off i just got to remember to go back to this first one and weave that in too right so now we've got our two borders front one there and the plane oh, the plane on the back and obviously we've got all our little ends loose in between so we just now need to join the two together to hide those up so you can start in any corner 
make sure you've got your right side your border one facing you and then we're just gonna start I say start at any of the marked corners so we're gonna have a standing double crochet to start and because I'm gonna go in the round work in the round and join up at the end I don't usually start with a slip knot on my hook just a personal thing so I'm just gonna start like so by twisting that yarn around and then we insert just into the back loops so where you've got this marked corner chain for the front I've just gone into that back loop there and I'm going to go into like well it would have been the back loop as you worked it there so that's like the inner loops if you like okay so if you can see there are the two marked corner stitches for the two borders I'm just going to start with a double crochet standing double crochet in there and then as with all of the other corners I'm just going to work another double crochet in the same place so all of the corners are going to have two double crochets in them okay so then we're just going to work oh, get that out of there. we're just going to work around the blanket just picking up the inner loop so like the back loop as it would have been worked of each of these stitches so I've got that one there and I'm going to pick up here we go on the back and work a double crochet through that so that is how we are going to join our two borders together so it's as simple as that just carry on around the border joining the two together there we go just picking up those sort of inner loops of each of the borders with a double crochet okay and when you get to the corners if you've got if you haven't missed any stitches are down the sides you should find that you get to the little marked corner chains at exactly the same time for each border and just make sure when you get to those marked stitches you work two double crochets in there not just one just to fill out the corners okay you might even want to work three to make it a sort of much crisper corner but I think two works okay personally but it's all personal taste okay right so I've now got right the way around joined the entire border up and I've just now got to got to that last invisible join so we'll just do that together so again let's ignore this first one with the standing double crochet and just insert your needle under that next stitch don't pull it too don't mean pull that one down out of the way because we're basically creating a new top loop for that then insert that back into there and that back bit and again just pull it tight enough so it looks just like the other stitches and then we've just got a weave weave in the back obviously this is now part we're going to see so we need to be slightly more careful so what I tend to do I'm now going to in there just move my hook down hook, hook needle down there again don't sure you don't pull that too tight because we don't want to bunch anything up okay and then what I'll tend to do is just wrap it around one stitch there go like between a few more stitches so make sure you don't end up coming out onto the front of your border but so make sure when you do that in there you're you're just going between the two borders do it again and then just sort of stick it out there what we can do if you then just pull it it was a slightly tighter as you cut it there we go it then disappears into the back so you can't see where we did that so you'll just need to do the same with this end or first end and that'll be that and you're all completed i really hope you've enjoyed making florist fauna as much as i enjoyed designing it